about this film? Are you going to be in tonight or tomorrow? What, what's happening now? Tomorrow morning, half past eight. That means I've got to get somebody in here for half past seven in the morning to get it all made up. Other than that, what else can you do? Bring one in at half past ten tonight, one mil, and the other six in tomorrow morning. Well, that's no good at all. It's going to cost trouble time in the morning. Ten hours. That's all wrong. Can't, you'll have to do something more about other than that. We don't show it at all. Right, that's it. You get on to your head office and sort it out. I've worked at this cinema for 21 and a half years and uh, during that time I've had some very strange and varied experiences, particularly with the big queues. I used to have to control three big queues and sometimes people became irate and all tensed up because they were so eager to get in and see the, f the, the very good films we used to show. During the 60s, we had one evening, we had the Beatles in, and it was my particular job to look after Paul McCartney so that he wouldn't be mobbed when, he, when we went down into the lounge in the theatre. There were many people waiting, and the management feared that people would irritate or annoy him by asking for autographs and that kind of thing. But. Uh, he was very friendly, very nice young chap, and uh, when he left the theatre after the show, he gave me quite a sizable tip. This is our mercury rectifier, which controls our number one arc, number two arc, also our spot lamp. This is the only mercury rectifier left here in the West End, and, uh, and all I can say is it's one of the best.
DP seven dish. Um, we've got three ratios, seventy mil. We've got the old ratio, which they use called standard. We've got one eight five, one six six. Then you had cinema scope. Now these DP70s are a lovely machine to work on. They're very quiet, oil sealed. Seventy mil is, is, is quite quite smooth as it's running through. Comparing it with a, with a 35, you, you'd never know whether it was 35 or 70 mil running through. Now the first machine I was on, which was Simplex, then I went into Ross, and from Ross I went to Westrax. Westrax is 70, the DP70s, 75s, and now I'm on the, on, on the 70s, Philips 70s. I came uh, to the Classic, I came to the, um, the Columbia and then the Classic took us over, took it over and I've worked for them ever since and then it was changed over to the Premier and I was a cleaner and I rung this, I've rung this cinema all on my own and enjoyed every minute of it and it, I'm very sorry it's coming to an end. <laughs> The manager, uh, Mr. Parks, was very, very nice, and I liked to work for him, but he has since left. And which, we all know now that the cinema has come to an end and will be changed over to the curtain. This is a 35mm film we use. Well, it was August 1945, I happened to go to the pictures one night and see a slide on the screen for a trainee boy as projectionist. So I thought I'd go along and see about the job as I was leaving school at that time. And this is a 70mm film we use. I went along, the manager said, yes, we'll try you out for a fortnight and see how you're getting on. And so from then onwards, I was there for quite a time, but I, as, I, as I went along, I was, jobs I was detailed to do was cleaning out, sweeping the box floor, cleaning brass, fire shutters, rewinding, but I wasn't I never allowed to go on the machine until roughly about 18 months but all that time I was doing cleaning and maintenance landing up
I'll never forget my first changeover. It was at the ABC Kingston on a Saturday. It was I used to go into work with my father on a Saturday, and uh, he said, "How would you like to do a changeover?" Here? So me being sort of all cool and cocky, like said, "Yeah, okay, then." So he said, "Go on, then. go ahead." And at that moment, I knew he was serious, and I was so nervous because we got about five or six hundred people in all watching the film. You've got to get everything right. So he struck the arc for me and I sat down by the side of the projector and he said, don't worry about anything else, you know, just keep an eye on the screen for the dots. So I'm sitting there waiting for the first dot and it seems like forever and I'm waiting and waiting, getting nervous, you know, thinking oh, I've missed it. <laughs> and up it came, I pressed the button the projector started. I looked back to open the dowser, but my dad had already got there. So I sat down, put my finger back, trying to find the button for the over. I couldn't find it. There's only a few seconds between the dots, but it seemed like forever I was searching for that button. But when I found it, the dot came up, hit the button, and over it went. No numbers on the screen, I was well pleased. say was the chief so uh, well no actually he wasn't a chief at the time he was the chief at the end when the old chief was made redundant but uh, I started going in Saturdays and just seeing the films and one thing led to another and I was sort of helping out you know um, running down the road getting changed bits and pieces like that and then when I came to school leaving age uh, manager said well you know there's a job here if you want it Clive so I just took it you know, just 
um, didn't even think about it. Right, we're now in the boiler house beneath the Premier Theatre in Shaftesbury Avenue. Now this is our generator, which is a General Motors Bedford diesel. It's used as secondary power in case the West End blacks out. Uh, all we need to do is to put the key in the generator and uh, start the generator up for our own power source, which will enable us to continue running the shows. Um, this will give us all our needs. It will run, operate the projectors, the boiler, also the main motors in the theater, and it will also give us our own power. So, so how did you get into, into the box? Oh, well, what happened was, um, I did, I think it was 18 months of um, cashiering and this type of thing, and uh, a vacancy came in the box, one of the guys left, I think it was, and um, it, the, the, the situation arose where the, uh, the guy came down, um, the zone engineer came down, and uh, I said, well, you know, I know quite a bit about running the box, um, I wouldn't mind sort of going up there, you know, and training up to be a projectionist. Of course, I knew a lot already because of what my father had taught me, and uh, the, f the funny thing was the chief went sick because they was on single many. So the chief went sick and um, there was nobody to run the show and he had to be sent home. So of course the manager came running down to me, you know, uh, oh Clive, can you keep the show going until your dad gets here? Mm. So I managed to keep the show going until my dad got there. It just led on from there. Um, they, they put me up there as a trainee and uh, qualify it but unfortunately they, they closed it down they sold out to the bingo downstairs this is a cinema boiler which does all the heating and ventilation for the whole of the theatre we use between 200 and 300 gallons a week well, after Woking, uh, through circumstances and one thing and another, uh, m myself and my father ended up working together again in the premiere here. Um, when Classics took it over uh, a couple of years ago now. And uh, they, they brought me in from Oxford Street Wells originally. Um, uh, as a senior, which was a bit of a promotion, so it didn't entail a lot of extra work, a bit more responsibility if something went wrong. But basically it's still the same job, um, showing films, making sure everything runs okay. We have to keep an eye on all the lights and the fittings. Um, it's, it's an old cinema, so a lot of the wiring's a bit sort of iffy, to say the least. So when fittings go, we find ourselves repairing them, one thing and another. There's a lot more work here as in maintenance because it's uh, um, an older cinema. Things tend to be wearing out. This is our oil feed line. In case of a fire, this is our motorised fire valve. This will automatically switch the oil flow off from the tank into the boiler in case of a fire. How, how do you change from one machine to another without, without people knowing what's going on? Well, when you're watching television, sometimes, or when you're at the cinema, you see little dots on the top right-hand side of the screen. Well, the first one of those dots is to start the projector, and the second one is to press a button which tr transfers sound and picture to the other projector. So that's, that's how you change. So you have to do that every approximately 40 minutes. Um, so that that's that part of it. But um, then you have to take the film out of that projector and rewind it, um, and then lace it up in the projector again, or put it away and get another reel out. Mm -hmm. See, whereas with a tower or a cake stand, the whole program is on one 
spool or on, on one continuous reel. Um, you have several separate reels uh, that have to be shown on a changeover system. But I know we'll meet some sunny day. So what makes this cinema so different from the rest of them in the <coughs> Well, basically the, the technique, the, the changeovers, everything's manual, you have to do the lights by hand yeah. and everything. Whereas a lot of the places are um, automated, so you just press one button at the start of the film and uh, it'll take your house lights down, it'll fade your music, it'll open the curtains and shoot your picture. I've locked him in. He's still sleeping, he's a brave man, isn't he? Seems so. This is a Philips amplifier, or a main amplifier, 35 and 70 millimeter. On this top row here, you've got the power packs. If this one here packs up, we can interchange them. On the second row, we have the power unit. On the third row, we've got three, three optical amplifiers. On the fourth row, we've got the 35mm four-track three amplifiers here. These four here, and these four here. And these are, these are the controls of the sound levels. On, on this row here, we've got six 70mm three amplifiers Where you've got, on, on this one here is your inner left. This one here is your center channel. Your inner right channel. These are, this is operated surround. That is your left and your right. And these are the controls for your bass and your treble controls. This is number number two control panel, which is basically the same thing, inner left, center, inner right, surround, left and right, and these are, these are the controls that we use.
Well, when I first came to this building, which was then the Columbia Theatre, um, I first walked in the box and it was just like sort of going back into an Aladdin's cave. You know, everything here was as I read in books of how the old projection boxes used to be, where there was absolutely no automation here at all. All the controls were done by hand. Um, it was, we well, had two sets of tabs, carbon arcs, and it, it was just, it was fantastic. As I say, where I came from, it was all the modern equipment with towers and cake stands, and coming back here, it was, well, to say the least, it was just, it was fantastic. You know, I've always sort of commented on, it's, it's sort of like going back to a working museum, because at that time when we came here, there was only two other boxes that I knew of in the West End that worked with carbon arcs. And uh, sadly now that this is the last box left that use carbon arcs, and, um, and all the skills that I learnt earlier on in, when I started in the job, you know, they, I could fulfil myself and use them again. And uh, that's probably why I've always enjoyed working here at the Premier Theatre. It was at the ABC Kingston and uh, it was on a Saturday because I used to go into work with my father on a Saturday and I was only about nine, ten, something like that. Cut! 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 My tea's cold! <laughs> now I started in, in this business 40 years ago. It's a lot different than what it is today. The business was far better. Yeah, the border house beneath the Premier Theatre in Shaftesbury Avenue. This is our General Motors Bedford diesel engine, which generates between 380 and 440 volts uh, for our um, stop, stop, stop. 